All right, so we're going to go through and look at uh, how to verify a polynomial division statement. So the statement says all of this divided by x minus 4 is equal to this. Now, I'm not going to solve for x in this. I'm just going to I'm just going to verify whether or not it's true, okay? So to tell whether or not it's true, uh, what we what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in some number for x on the left-hand side and work it out, and then plug in that same number for x on the right-hand side and work it out and see whether or not the two things are equal, okay? <clears throat> uh, down here, if you read the notes here, it says the only number, there's certain numbers you want to avoid, and in this particular case, the only number we do not want to plug in for x is the number 4. And that's because 4, if you plug that in for x, you would get a 0 in the denominator. And we don't know how to divide by 0. That's the reason that we want to avoid using the number 4. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the number 2. All right? uh, I'm going to do 2 store. All right, so store is right here. 2, store, and then here's my x. Bam. 2, store to x, and then press enter. Okay, now the calculator thinks that x is equal to 2. Notice it's the number, and then store, then x, not the other way around. All right. So, 2, store, x. All right. <clears throat> to type in the left-hand side, uh, what I'm going to do is make a giant fraction. Uh, fractions on here are alpha and then y equals. Okay, and then press enter. Then I can just type in this top expression here. x to the fourth is going to be x. And then I'm going to use the little caret symbol here next to the division. x and then a 4. Sorry, x caret and then 4. Arrow over minus 3x caret symbol 3 plus x plus 8. <clears throat> and then the bottom uh, is just x minus 4. <clears throat> all right, so the left-hand side, so this is, all right, when, when x equals 2, the left-hand side is equal to negative 1. All right, uh, now I'm going to type in the right-hand side and see what it equals. x to the third plus x squared, plus 4x, plus 16, and then plus, here I need to start a little fraction, alpha y equals, and it's 16 over x minus 4. All right, and I got 28 on the right-hand side. <clears throat> so whenever I chose a random number to plug in for x, I got a different number on the left hand side than the right hand side, this would prove, all right, down here you should you know read this little statement down here. If the left hand side does not equal the right side, then the two expressions are not the same. So these two things are not equal. Alright, so you would say no. <clears throat> they do not equal each other. Now I want to mention here it's not that difficult to do this stuff without a calculator. I'm going to go through real fast and show you how not difficult it is. <clears throat> All right, I'm just going to plug in the number 2 for x. Okay, So it's going to be 2 to the 4th power minus 3 times 2 to the 3rd power plus 2 plus 8. Uh, you probably don't even have to write this stuff down. You know, A lot of this we can do without writing it down. Over... 2 minus 4. So 2 to the 4th power, that's equal to 16. That's 2 multiplied by 2 four times. Uh, this little piece is a little bit, a lot of errors do show up on this little piece right here. you got to do 2 to the 3rd power first, and then times that by 3. So 2 to the 3rd power is equal to 8, and then 8 times 3 is 24 plus 2 plus 8, 
2 minus 4 is negative 2. Uh, we just got to work out what the numerator is here. 2 plus 8, that's equal to 10. 10 plus 16, that's equal to 26. And then 26 minus 24, that's equal to 2. So I got 2 divided by negative 2, and that's that negative 1 from earlier. Okay. On the right-hand side, I'm just going to go ahead and plug in 2 for x. Just pretend all these x's are equal to 2, okay? So 2 to the third power, so this is the right-hand side, 2 to the third power is equal to 8. 2 to the second power is equal to 4. 4 times 2, that's equal to 8. And then 16 over uh, 2 minus 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And then we just got to work this out. <clears throat> All right. Uh, 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 plus 8 is 20. And then 20 plus 16 is 36. Plus. Uh, this is just 16 divided by negative 2. This comes out to a whole number, thankfully. Uh, that is negative 8 for that piece right there. And then 36 plus negative 8. That's where our 28 was coming from, from earlier. So hopefully it's not too bad. I, I want to encourage you guys to try this stuff without a calculator, but also try it with a calculator because it helps. <laughs> Sometimes the answers are nasty decimals, and it helps to know how to use a calculator with it. <clears throat> now, uh, so that was that was what happens when you plug in the number 2. Let me see where I'm not on time. These examples take a whole long time to do. All right. Well, uh, let's actually, we'll just skip down to example two. I'm going to show you. You don't always have to plug in the number two. Okay. You could. We could have literally chose like any number except four to plug in. All right. Example two down here. Uh, does this nasty expression equal that nasty expression? Now put here, you won't be able to use the numbers 2 or 1 in this case. Now, it's not clear what numbers you cannot use. So what I, what I would say is uh, choose whatever number you want to, but be a little careful because you, it might backfire from, uh, for you, it might backfire on you. So like here, if I do 2 store to x, I just want to show you what happens. Uh, sorry, 2 store to x. And if I type in the left-hand side, 3x cubed <clears throat> plus 4x plus 11, and then x squared, x squared minus 3x plus 2. All right, calculator is going to give me a divide by 0 error. And that's because when we plug in the number 2 for x down here, <clears throat> it's actually causing that denominator to blow up. Uh, 2 to the second power is equal to 4. 3 times 2 is equal to 6 plus 2. All of this turns out to be 0. <clears throat> All right, and you might not notice that right away. So what I would tell you is if you get this error, uh, the divide by zero error, that just means we, you got to use a different number than the number that you chose. <clears throat> uh, the same thing is actually going to happen when you plug in the number one here. Uh, you know, you would get one minus three plus two. One minus three plus two. Hopefully you can see that this will come out to be zero. And that's the, that's the reason you can't use the numbers one or zero. So you could use the number 3 if you wanted to, um, whatever you choose, really. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you a very nice number that you can use. Uh, the reason it's so nice is because you don't even have to use a calculator to work it out. Uh, what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to start off by using 0, x equals 0. The reason 0 is nice is because you don't have to do very much math. In the numerator, this term is just going to disintegrate when you plug in 0. 4 times 0 also disintegrates. And so you're just left with 11. You get 11 on top. And then on the bottom, these two disintegrate, and you're just left with 2. 
Uh, 11 divided by 2 is 5 and a half. So when you plug in 0 for x, the left-hand side equals 5.5. Now we need to plug in 0 for x on the right-hand side. All right, this is going to go away. You're going to be left with that 9 plus, and then for this fraction, you're going to be left with a negative 7 divided by a positive 2. You might want to use a calculator for this, maybe. <clears throat> Uh, 7 over 2, that's 3.5. So I get 9 plus negative 3.5, which does turn out to be 5.5. Okay? Now if I scroll up here. So this is, this is like, this is leading us to believe that these two things are equal to each other. Because the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. All right? If the left-hand side does equal the right, there's a good chance that they are equal. What you should do is repeat the process, but plug in a different number uh, other than zero, other than the number that you chose the first time. All right. So just because it works the first time that you do it, it actually might be a coincidence. All right. Uh, so what I would recommend is go back through and choose a different number other than zero to plug in for x. All right. uh, we could do this by hand. I'm just going to go ahead and use the, use the calculator, okay, just to verify. So it could be coincidence that we're getting the, the same answer back on both sides. Just to verify, we're going to do one more. <clears throat> uh, I said I can't use the numbers one or two. I could use four or five or six, whatever number. I'm going to go with like the number five. 5 store to x. Okay, again, 5 store and then x. And then I just need to type in the left hand side here. Uh, thankfully, I've already got it from earlier. I can just arrow up and repeat that. Alright, so I get 203 over 6. Uh, if you want to make that a decimal, 203 divided by 6. That's what I get. So, over here, if x is equal to 5, all right, the left-hand side is going to give me uh, 203 over 6. That's what the calculator told me. All right, and then on the right-hand side, I need to type all this in. So, 3x plus 9 plus alpha y equals... To make the fraction 25x minus 7 whew, x squared minus 3x plus 2 I get the same answer back 203 over 6 all right this pretty much proves that these two things are equivalent all right I know that was a lot <laughs> thanks